Hi everyone, my name is Swapnil Pawar. I'm working as a software architect with HGS Digital. Today, we're going to deep dive into AWS View. Before that, let me share about my cloud journey. I have been into a cloud now over a couple of years, and I have been holding a few AWS certifications, Developer Associate, Solution Architect Associate, and Cloud Practitioner. You can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. That's my handler down in the presentation. Let's get started. So AWS GNU. AWS GNU is basically a scalable serverless data ingestion tool. Our agenda today will be what is AWS GNU? What is EPL? Why and when use GNU? And a lot of handful labs. Let's get Let's go ahead. What is AWS GNU? Now, AWS GNU is a fully managed ETL extract transform load service that makes it simple and cost effective to categorize data, clean it, enrich it, and move it between various data sources. GNU consists of a central met metadata repository known as GNU Catalog. GNU is completely serverless. It runs on a fully managed infrastructure. You don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure. AWS takes care of it. AWS Blue Data Catalog, which is an ETL engine that generates Python and Scala code. AWS Blue is designed to work with semi-structured data. It introduces a component called Dynamic Frame which you can use in your ETL script. We'll go deep into a later slide. GNU is just not limited to the GNU data catalog. Okay? It has other very important components like crawlers and classifiers, ETL scripting, streaming, workflows, triggers, and dev endpoints. Now, before we go actually deep into the GNU and its components, let's understand what is ETL. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. So you're basically extracting data from various sources, for example, databases, and okay, you're transforming it to make it more suitable for the consumption. And then you load it to the destination. In, in, in this case, it might be a data lake or a data warehouse for analyzing it or processing it further. In the uh, you know, so easily integrated with reporting tool for analysis purposes. You can use the data that you transform in to further drive the business decisions. Examples like you know, uh, managing sales data of e-commerce, processing massive contact centers data. Now, why GNU? Now, if you see all the bigger organizations, they all are generating data. We have a billions of trillions of data moving all around the world. And data integration problem is very complex and time consuming. The other main issue is that there is no proper tooling that can be helpful to the companies to perform the data integration uh, uh, operation. Many customers are still performing hard coding in the operation. And it involves a lot of undifferentiated heavy lifting. With manual approach, it takes 70% of your time and labor on ETL process. Now, when you hard code it, when you take that manual approach, the more it gets more uh, heavy lifting on your side. On contrast to that, when you know, AWS View takes care of everything, it automates the heavy lifting of ETL by discovering and organizing data. It allows you to focus on writing transformation using ETL programming. We're going to see that how to write that ETL programming and how you automate it by discovering and organizing data from uh, source databases. So as new trends are chiming in, new technology evolve, and the more data moves in the organization and the more uh, automation and the more uh, with proper tooling organizations can perform operations and they can drive a smarter business outcome. 
when one should use glue you can use aws glue to organize to clean to validate and format data for storage in data warehouse or data lake if you want to process semi structured data such as click stream or process logs in aws glue if you want to run a serverless queries against your s3 data lake in aws glue is the solution if you want to create an event driven etl pipelines from from end to end solution from extraction to load in aws glue is the solution if you want to maintain a unified view of your data is an aws glue catalog you can easily search and discover the data sets that you own you can also use aws glue to understand your data assets so what i mean by that is you can store your data using various aws services and still maintain a unified view just like i mentioned so data catalog also serves as a drop in replacement for your external apache hive meta store let's move ahead and understand how glue works aws glue uses aws services to orchestrate your etl jobs to build data warehouses and data lakes and generate output streams aws glue calls api operation to transform your data you know create your runtime logs store your job logic and create notifications to help monitor your job runs aws glue takes care of provisioning and managing resources that are required to learn your workload you don't need to create any infrastructure for an etl tool because aws glue does it for you with aws glue you create jobs using table definitions in your data catalog so we're going to look further in more detail later into later into the presentation but if you see this diagram there are a lot of few components here data stores crawler catalog jobs you know extract and load so for data stores right you define a crawler to populate your aws glue data catalog with metadata table definitions now data stores uh, there are different types of data stores which supports aws glue like we have amazon s3 we have relational database we have third party jdbc accessible databases we have dynamo db we have mongo db and amazon document db with mongo db compatibility in streams as as a data store we have amazon kinesis data streams and kafka which acts as a data sources for the etl jobs so you so if you see crawler so you point your crawler at the data store and crawler creates a table definitions in the data catalog for streaming sources in glue you can create a glue job and write your custom etl script as we saw it called as a dynamic frame to transform your data you can run your job you can either manually run it on demand or you can trigger it and you can schedule it uh, with the help of time based schedule now when the job runs it performs a transform operations uh, and it will load the data into destination data store you want to store it in s3 you can do that you want to store it into a redshift you can do that as well now let's move on and understand the new components and let's let's understand how important each component is and how we can leverage that to solve your data integration problem first component of aws glue is data catalog now data catalog as i said it's a persistent metadata store that lets you store annotate share metadata in your aws cloud in the same way you would do in apache hive meta store so each aws account has one aws new data catalog per aws region it provides uniform repository where systems can store and find metadata to keep track of data in data silos data catalog also provides comprehensive audit 
and governance capabilities with schema change tracking and data access control. So you can audit changes to data schemes, schemas. This helps ensure that data is not inappropriately modified or inadvertently shared. The second component is job authoring. A job in your business logic required to perform ETN work. So job runs are initiated by triggers which can be scheduled or driven by events. So when you run a job, AWS Glue runs a script that extracts data from source, it transforms it and loads into a target. The third component is GNU workflow. Now in AWS GNU, you can actually use a workflows to create and visualize complex ETN activities involving multiple crawlers and jobs and triggers. So it provides a managed infrastructure to orchestrate your ETL workflow. And each workflow manages the execution and monitoring of all of its jobs and crawlers. It records execution progress and status. So triggers, which we'll see, that's another component actually, within workflows can start both jobs and crawlers and can be fired when jobs and crawlers complete. So basically with triggers, you can actually create a long chain of interdependent jobs and crawlers. With that being said, our next component is triggers. Now a trigger, as name suggests, is, is, is basically starts a new job when it fires. So you can schedule the jobs as well as run on demand or use the event bridge. So there are three types of to start triggers. As I said, you can schedule it, you can run it on demand, and using the event bridge, you can start the workflow upon the occurrence of a single Amazon event bridge event or a batch of event bridge events. Now, with this trigger, event bridge trigger type, GNU can be an event consumer in an event driven architecture. So, any event bridge event type can start a workflow. Common use case, a common use case of event bridge event is the arrival of a new object in an Amazon S3 bucket. The next component we have is dev endpoints. Now, as the name suggests, okay, AWS dev endpoints, blue dev endpoints actually create an environment. Next component is dev endpoints. So dev endpoints is basically an environment known as development endpoints which you can use to iteratively develop and test your ETL scripts. So when you create a development environment, you actually provide configuration values to provision the development environment. You tell AWS View how to set up the network so that you can access the endpoint securely and your endpoint can access your data stores. Next component is AWS crawlers. Now, crawler access your data store, it extracts your metadata and creates table definitions in your new data catalog. So it lets you set up crawlers that scans data in all kinds of repositories, classify it, extract schema information from it, and automatically store in data catalog. The next important component we have is streaming. This is a new a new AWS GNU component that has been launched. So AWS GNU enables you to perform ETL operations on streaming data using continually running jobs. For example, you can run streaming ETL uh, built on Apache uh, structured streaming engine, which can ingest streams from Kinesis data streams, Kafka, Man streaming. Okay. Streaming ETL can clean and transform streaming data, load it in S3 or JDBC data stores. The streaming ETL job can use both AWS GNU built in transforms and transforms that are native to Apache Spark structure programming. We're going to see it later. So let's dive into it each component, GNU data catalog. But before that, let me walk you through the console 
how it looks. So here we are in AWS View Console. So you can once you log into the AWS Console, you can search it here blue and the AWS view appear, or you can click on this services, search for analytics, and you will see Glue, which is a fully managed ETL uh, transform and load service. So if you see in the left hand side menu, there's a data catalog which has databases. Uh, then you know, inside that we have tables, we have crawlers, we have classifiers, then we have schema registries. Uh, uh, Glue Studio is a new tool. We will we'll talk about it in, in the next video. Uh, blueprints is basically for your workflow, which is, uh, you know, that is blueprints created by AWS. So you can either manually build a workflow component at a time, or you can use that one as well. Uh, the job component that we saw, you have to create a development environment where you actually uh, create a Jupyter notebook, uh, where you actually uh, test your code. ML transform, you can leverage the ML functionality uh, to transform your data. Uh, triggers component that you saw, if you want to trigger a GNU workflow, you can on demand trigger it or you can schedule it basically. This is the dev endpoint that you, know, you have to create endpoint which you can uh, connect to the development endpoint. Jobs is basically your ETL scripts that you created either using uh, uh, you know, uh, the PySpark language. The notebooks are basically a SageMaker notebooks or a Zeppelin that we'll talk about it later. And there are a few tutorials here. You can go through it if you would like so how to add a crawler and add a job. I'm going to walk you through at the end of this uh, presentation. So this is basically the view console so you saw in the console uh, you know what are the components of you now let's go a little further detail into each of it and the little workings basically so first component we saw a data catalog now if you look at the architecture uh, blue data catalog contains references to data that is used as sources and targets of your etl jobs in aws so as we uh, so earlier there are data stores and obviously AWS GNU supports S3, uh, RDS, Redshift, DynamoDB, JDBC as the data stores. So in order to create a data warehouse or data lake, you must have a catalog of this data. So if you look at the diagram, there are number one, two, three, four. We got, I'm gonna tell you what each component does and how it's gonna process uh, overall. So look at the number one, which is crawler, which runs any custom classifiers that you choose to infer the format and scheme of your data, okay? Uh, second, if no custom classifier matches your data schema, uh, you can use built-in classifiers, try to recognize your data schema. An example of built-in classifier is one that recognizes uh, JSON data. Now you will think, what is classifiers? Classifier actually reads the data in data store. If it recognizes the format of the data, it generates a schema. So as I mentioned, Glue provides a set of built-in classifiers you can also create on your own. So Glue invokes custom classifiers first in order that you specify in your crawler definition. And depending on the results that are returned from the custom classifier, you might also invoke a built-in classifiers. Now, when you want to use custom classifiers, okay, you use classifiers when you want to crawl a data store to define metadata. You can set up crawler with the order set of classifiers. When the crawler invokes a classifier, the classifier determines whether the data is recognized. If the classifier can't recognize the data or is 100% certain, the crawler invokes the next classifier in the list to determine 
whether it recognizes the data. The third step, the crawler actually connects to the data store. Some data stores require connection properties for the crawler access, like JDBC. Or for S3 and RTS, we need to have the IAM role, which BW, uh, Glue will utilize in order to access it. Four, the inferred schema is created for your data. And the fifth one, the crawler writes metadata to the data catalog. A table definition contains metadata about the data in your data store. The table is written to a database, which is a container of tables in the data catalog. Attributes of a table include classification, which is a label uh, created by the classifier. So let's switch over to the AWS console and I'll walk you through how you can use crawlers basically to crawl the data from the data stores. So here we are at the AWS console. So here is the crawler. You can click on the crawler. You create a name, test, go next. I think it's a name conflict. Yeah. So the second stage is crawler source type. So from which source you want to pull the data, right? Uh, uh, existing data catalogs or you know data stores. I'm choosing data stores. Uh, if you want to crawl all folders of the S3 data store, you can do that. If you want to crawl only new folders, you can do that. Also, you can crawl change folders identified by the S3 event notification. So I'm going to keep the default value. I'm going to go next. Here, I'm choosing S3 data store. Here, I have to add the connection. And that will be... Uh, the admin and the connection type basically. So if you see, uh, this is optionally include a network connection to use this S3 target because each crawler is limited to one network connection. So any future S3 targets will use the same connection. You specified the bucket path. If you want to exclude anything when excluded, click next. Yeah. I'm using any, any folder, I'm going next. You want to add another data store or no, depends on you. I'm, I don't want to add it. So if you have the existing role, you can choose it. I have the AWS GNU service role, which provides GNU to access the S3 bucket. Okay. I'm gonna go next. Here is the frequency, that's a scheduler, whether you want to run the crawler, on an hourly basis or daily basis or weekly basis, or you want to run on demand, you can do that. Okay, and uh, databases, we, under which database you want to add this table because crawler is gonna need a table. And if you want to add a prefix to that table. So I'm not gonna create the uh, crawler. I'm gonna show you which is already uh, created. This is the one, and after this, uh, once the crawler is run, you can see the table here. So, for example, if I say this, if I scroll down, if you see in the schema, the different columns with their data types are populated, and these are uh, generated automatically and you know, based on the classifiers, uh, the data type has been uh, set. But if you want, you can change the schema by clicking on the edit schema. You can, if you want date to be on a timestamp format, you can do that and click on update. Okay. Uh, here is the databases. You can add the database. Uh, and you know, let's say if you have a 
if you want to create a specific database and you want to put the tables under that database which is crawled by a crawler you can do that as well so this is the table screenshot that we just saw let's move on and understand the new crawlers so a crawler can crawl multiple data stores in a single run and upon completion the crawler creates or updates one or more tables in your data catalog i just showcased your demo of the group crawler earlier it currently supports jdbc mongodb document db data store for S3, as I show in your console, you can specify the optional connection of type network. And obviously, a connection is a data catalog object that store uh, information like credential or VPC information and much more. How do crawlers work? Right? So when you define a crawler, you choose one or more classifiers and evaluate the format of your data to infer a schema. So when the crawler runs, the first classifier in your list to recognize your data store is used to create a schema for your table. You can use built-in classifier as you saw, or you can define on your own. In the AWS Blue provides built-in classifiers to infer schemas from common files with format that include json csv apache avro if the file that is crowd is compressed the crawler must download it to process it when a crawler runs it interrogates files to determine their format and compression type and writes their properties into data catalog so here is a sample diagram of the overall process Let's say you have the web application logs, server logs that you want to analyze, it, you want to understand it, what's happening at the server level. And you are, you are storing the server logs to the S3. You can create a crawler, a uh, new crawler, point to the S3 bucket, which will uh, uh, crawl all the folders and the data inside of the bucket. And you, based on the classifier, it will uh, create a table partition uh, uh, you know, and, and, and create a table into the data catalog. So for Athena, so I'm not going to Athena, basically it's a serverless uh, SQL based query language for the S3. And uh, for Athena, Blue Data Catalog has acts as a uh, data, uh, uh, basically kind of a data store. So this is a sample architecture based on crawling. So we saw what classifier is all about. These are the built-in list of you know CSV classifier, which is comma, pipe, tab. We have Amazon Eon, we have Redshift, we have log, we have MySQL, Postgres, Ruby, uh, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, Parkway, JSON and much more now let's move on to the another component job authoring now a job is basically a business logic that performs etl work so you basically write a etl programming uh, in, in a PySpark language uh, you know to to perform operations on the data to, to perform transformation operation so when you run, when you start a job, this glue runs a script that basically extracts data from sources, transform it, and loads into target. So let me walk you through this diagram, uh, you know, we're seeing on the screen. So when you author a job, you supply details about data source, targets and other information and the result is generated by spark script 
Now, this is, if you see the line, this is the complete picture of uh, the process of authoring jobs in new console. Step one, you know, as is you saw, you choose the data source for your job. Uh, the tables that you represent your data source must already be defined in your data catalog. The second, uh, you should choose the data target of your job. And the tables that represent the data target can be defined in your data catalog. So you choose a target location when you author the job. If the target requires a connection, the connection is also referenced in your job. The third point, term, you can customize the job processing environment by providing arguments for your job and a generated script. We'll look more into it uh, in, the, in, the, in the demonstration that I'm going to show you the overall ETL script. The fourth step is you generates a script, but you can also edit the script as per your requirement to add source, target, and transformation. Uh, you can use built-in transformations to transform the data and store it into the target and location. The fifth, you specify how your job is invoked, either on demand or a time-based schedule or by event, the three types that we saw earlier. And the last one is based on your input, new generates a pipe, spark, or scala script. You can tailor the script based on your business needs and perform transformations. Right. As we saw, you can write your own scripts. Uh, a streaming ETL job is like a Spark job, except that it performs ETL on data streams. Glue script editor also lets you insert, modify, and delete sources. And the script editor displays both the script and the diagram to help you visualize the flow of your data. So here is like a job script editor that you see. So you're gonna write the PySpark Pi code. You can actually, instead of writing, if you see top right, there are source, target, target, location, transform, and spy God. You can click on those location and it will generate a snippet of the code uh, in that editor and you can modify that. Let's move on to the next workflow, new workflows. So new workflows used to create and visualize complex ETL activities involving multiple crawlers, jobs, and triggers. Each workflow manages execution and monitoring of all jobs and crawlers. As I said earlier, there is a blueprint in, in AWS Blue Console which you can leverage to create a workflow or you can manually build a workflow uh, at a time using the management console. There are two different types of workflows, static and dynamic workflows. Now, static uh, uh, workflow view indicates the design of the workflow. While dynamic view is a runtime view that includes the latest run information of each of the jobs and crawlers. Now, when the workflow is running, the console displays the dynamic view, graphically indicating the jobs that have completed and that are yet to run. Uh, new blueprints provide a way to create and share new workflows when there is a complex etl process that could be used for similar use case so rather than creating a new workflow for each use case you can actually use a single blueprint and how to build the new workflows now if you remember in the in ws blue console there's a workflow 
uh, section. Now, to start a workflow, so we need to have either scheduled, on demand trigger. The rest of the workflow triggers should be conditional. In fact, conditional triggers within workflows can be fired and started by both jobs and crawlers. So if you look at the diagram, right? Uh, you can actually add the components here. You can design the workflow how you want it. So if you see, I'm actually uh, triggering front-end event. So it's the start of it. See the legend over top, the circle start. The square defines the crawler. That's my crawler is going to run it. The triangle is basically a trigger, which will trigger the job. And the job will trigger another crawler, which crawl from the transform data and put it into a new catalog, which then I can use Athena or something to query it for further analysis. So this circle is basically a start. So each workflow is defined by the legend whether it's a crawler or a job or a trigger. And you can create your own workflow. Next. Next component is new dev endpoint. As I mentioned, it's a name indicator, it's a development endpoint. You can use to iteratively develop and test your, your ETL scripts. Now, once you create development endpoint, you can then create a notebook that connects to the endpoint and use your notebook to author and test your ETL script when you are satisfied with the results of your development process. You can create an ETL job that runs your script. So development endpoint workflow. Let's, let's go through a little bit. It will give a more clearer idea what it is and how you can actually leverage it to test your script before actually uh, go to the uh, jobs and deploy it. So, as I said it earlier, you gonna uh, you can create development endpoint uh, using console or API, and endpoint is launched in a VPC within your defined security group. The the console or API pulls the development endpoint until it is provisioned and ready for work. Once the development endpoint is ready, what you can do is you can go and create a notebook, basically whether it's a SageMaker notebook or a Zeppelin notebook that will connect to the development endpoint and then develop it using the browser. I will showcase you how uh, that works. And once you connect that dev endpoints with that uh, SageMaker notebook, you will able to you will have access to the data store of the view and you can run the ETL script you know using that SageMaker Jupyter notebook and see how uh, that script runs whether it's providing a right output or not. Next component is view streaming. So it's an ETL uh, built on Spark structured streaming engine can ingest streams from Kinesis, is Apache Kafka, manage Apache Kafka. It, streaming ETL can clean and transform streaming data, load it into S3 and JDBC data store. Use streaming ETL in AWS view 
to process event data like IoT streams, click streams, and network logs. This is a sample architecture that I pulled it from the AWS uh, documentation. So let's say you have the data generator on the extreme left, which is acts as a producer, and Amazon Finance's data stream, which is a streaming a tool uh, which consumes that data, which you want to process uh, on that data and send it uh, to the AWS new ETL streaming. Once that data comes into ETL streaming, it is further processed and it might write data into S3 or a DynamoDB somewhere as per, uh, you know, as per the requirement. And obviously, both that data store can further be integrated with other AWS services for analysis purpose. In this case, Athena has a strong integration with S3 because Athena is a serverless SQL type of query language for uh, S3 data storage. And obviously, QuickSight is a visualization tool by AWS, which helps you to create a dashboard and visualize the data. So here is a, a snippet of how you can create a streaming job configuration. So in the type, you have to choose Spark Streaming. And uh, the, the new version you want it. Uh, you want a new script to be authored by you or you want to uh, use existing script or you want a proposed script generated by AWS GNU. Okay, and you need to mention a path where this GNU script will be stored basically for later use. This is very important GNU monitoring. Now, every operation whether it's a server management or analytics or anything, monitoring is a very important part of maintaining the reliability, availability, and performance of AWS. So you can use the following automated monitoring tools to watch AWS view and report when something is wrong. You can leverage CloudTrail, uh, which will give you the who has performed the actions, what and when. CloudWatch logs give you much more detailed uh, information and CloudWatch events, basically. Uh, GNU monitoring has an important uh, feature called job bookmarking, which will be helpful in job authoring. I'll showcase you in that demo. GNU basically tracks data that has already been processed during a previous run of an ETL job by persisting state information. So let me give an example. Let's say you have a terabytes or petabytes of data. And uh, on a daily basis, GNU is running a job at a specified timing. When GNU calls the data, or uh, pass it over to the job, the job gets processed and data gets stored back into the S3. So whatever data has been processed, it has been marked as done, I mean, it's called job bookmarking. So on the next day, when the GNU crawler runs the job, I mean, the GNU job runs it, it won't crawl the, the data which has already been processed. I mean, you know, and that is very helpful to, uh, to, to, uh, to avoid that more execution time and repetitive processing of data. So it maintains the state information and reprocessing of old data. Your ETL job, uh, you know, uh, as I gave an uh, uh, example, right? Uh, job might read a new partitions and GNU tracks which partition of a job has been processed successfully and which not, you know, to prevent duplicate processing. Obviously, pricing is an important concern because you do not want to get overpriced by uh, by configuring the resources which you, you know, unknowingly. 
So understand, you no know, every AWS service is you pay only for that. You no, know, you pay for what you use. Similar in Glue, you you only pay for the time your ETN job takes to run. If an ETN job takes four hours, three hours to run, it will charge for that time period only. There are no resources to manage and no upfront cost because it's, it's a serverless managed service. You are not charged for startup and shutdown time. Glue is charged an hourly rate based on the number of data processing units or DPUs we see. A single DPU provides four virtual CPU and 16 gigabytes of memory and the networking capabilities to run your job. You are also billed per hour in increments of one minute, rounded to nearest minute with 10 minute minimum duration for each job. Just go through the documentation and there are a couple of examples that will help you understand how the view pricing works. Glue is come up with a lot of other features. The one feature is Glue Studio, uh, like whatever ETL scripts that you are writing. Now, with the help of Glue Studio, you can uh, use that visual uh, way to, 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 to do that. Along with that, uh, two new features has been added, Data Brew and Glue Elastic Brew. Now, Data Brew is actually a data preparation tool that makes it easy for data analysts and scientists to clean and normalize data to prepare it for analytics and machine learning. And Brew Elastic View, that's another feature, which is combine and replicate data across multiple data stores using SQL. We are not going to deep dive into these features right now, but I'm just giving you an overview so you can go and read about it. It's a demo time. So let's go over to the AWS console and I'll walk you through what are the components we saw, how to write the ETL programming, how you can author the job, how you can trigger it, job mark, job bookmarking and all those things. So let's head it over the console. Here we are in the console. In the last uh, you know, couple of minutes back, we saw how you can create a crawler and how you can schedule it. And the schema will be, I mean, table will be generated. And you, know, you can see the schema and change it. Now let's go to the ETL section. Okay? I, I think I mentioned like new studio. So this is a GNU Studio, which is basically a graphical interface for creating, running, and monitoring that ETL job. But we're not going to deep into it here. Let me walk you through the normal week first. So let's start with a blueprint. Now blueprint, as I said, it's, it's for the workflows basically to create the common ETL operations as per your need. So if you have any custom blueprint, you can use that. You can upload it in the S3 bucket. You can write a description and you can add as a blueprint. Okay, I'm not going to leap into it. Workflows, yes. So it's an orchestration tool for the view. So let's say workflow one, uh, max concurrency. You know any number right now you pick it and i'm gonna click add workflow and as soon as you add as you know once the workflow is created click on the radio button and you can see three tabs graph details and history so details basically the, the properties that you set, how much maximum concurrency do you want to achieve? Uh, when did it last run? What's the status of it? So the workflow is empty. So you create it by adding a uh, trigger. Since I have not added, let me add a new trigger. Test trigger. 
click at if you see it generated and you can click on the node that's basically a job that you want to add it let's say i want to add this which is this job is triggering you want to add crawler you can add crawler as well i'm gonna see add crawler so when this dynamo db extract job uh, you know uh, is gonna trigger this crawler basically and if i want this crawler uh, uh, to trigger further i can add that so you, from the actions menu you can click on add trigger and basically uh not add trigger uh Yeah, you can add node here multiple nodes basically if you want multiple crawlers to run uh you know um, triggered by uh, this yeah. so you can add it here Just like that you can create a custom workflow and you can run it on demand or either you can you know uh, schedule it basically using the triggers okay so here is the trigger you can add the trigger and if you see here our trigger is activated but jobs we haven't set it you know to run and if i want to edit it i can see when i want to do that but since my trigger type is on you know, basically in the workflow i've selected as a job so when that job basically runs that this trigger will do that further processing okay. so this is the one now the job authoring component that we saw so you can click here add job uh, you can type the name of it the role basically which will give the s3 access uh, yeah which one you want to whether you want to perform streaming atl or a spark or a python shell so i want to perform a pi spark Okay. and you want to perform a python 3 or spark 3.1 or uh, glue version 3 or 2 obviously 2 i mean the underlying processor is much faster basically to get the job done uh, you can write the script of your name go next i think and test script go next Test job. Go next. And if you see the data source, basically that you want to use, right? If you remember the uh, architecture diagram of job authoring, there will be a source and there will be a target. Now source will be this. What you want to do? I want to change schema. Let's say uh, uh, the a crawler did not detect the correct schema and you want to um, let's say rationalize the data change that structure nested json structure you want to click it and basically choose the data target you want to use it the same or a different one so i have created here this job and if you select click on the checkbox you will see here the jobs that has already run your history of the uh, run you can see the details here basically where is the location what's the language what's the PySpark version all those things and here is the script you can click on edit script and it will take you to the editor the screenshot that i showed you earlier and these are basically like similar we are importing packages uh, the name indicates source table then you know i'm rationalizing this basically i want to flatten the json structure so this is my script you can create a dynamic frame from that catalog uh, if you want to drop a specific field which is not required in your transformation i'm dropping it and then i'm applying mapping basically you know i'm applying the transformation and writing that data back to the s3 
in a parkway format which is recognizable by the you know uh, data catalog uh, and then i can analyze it using athena you see uh, you can insert a template from the cursor so if you want to do not want to write code you can just point the cursor here and click on the source you will see a dialog box and you can add it and it will generate a code for you so that's a pretty interesting stuff here we can similarly you can select target location we can select transform and you can see the different type of transform whether you want to relationalize it whether you want to filter it whether you want to apply mapping just like i did it to the dynamic frame whether you want to rename the field if it's not proper naming conventions uh, if you want to select from collection if you want to map it join it a lot of things so you can add the transform just like i have did it here apply mapping not apply that's a transformation i applied and you can save it here you can click on the generate diagram uh, since you no know, it's some issue so it's not generating it here so you can save it and once you've done it you can either you know manually run it or you can obviously uh you know uh, schedule the job like you know basis on the trigger okay. and so that's all about it now if you see here the monitoring part that we saw job bookmarking if you see there, there's a column called job bookmark which is enabled now how to enable that let me see which one is disabled so this is a disabled i want to enable it i'm clicking on the checkbox click on the action drop down and if i want to reset the job list okay so okay i'll edit job under monitoring options here okay. it's not it some issue with it Let me go on it. Uh, edit the job. Under advanced properties, you can see the job bookmark. So you click on enable and just save it. And your job bookmark is enabled. That's pretty cool, right? So yeah, so this way you can uh, create uh, the job according to your business logic that you want to perform and run it. So if you do not want to write it, you can, as I said, you can use new feature in WS Blue Studio which usually create job flows and performance so you can go to your job you can create a job like you want to visual with source and target you want the editor you want the jupyter notebook you want a blank canvas or what do you want it right if you want visual with the source and target you can actually select it if you click on it what would be your source whether it's a kinesis or a redshift or mysql you choose the source type, let's say S3. And the target, let's say I want to uh, store the data in a data warehouse or Redshift. I'm going to create it. Okay. Once I create it, you go to this editor. Right? And you can see here, uh, if you click on that square, we, are, we will actually see uh, properties of that. Uh, of that element so data catalog table which database you want it i want default one partition predicate or i want different one uh, which mapping you want to apply i mean also all the configuration you can do it basically here 
So in terms of predict wind stuff that you can uh, use it uh, to perform these ETL operations. So with this, we are done. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And now we can move ahead to the questions and let me know how did you like it. And please provide your feedback so I can uh, uh, bring more, you know, uh, to this uh, training. So thank you for joining with me. Have a great day.